left a message uh, just a short while ago. I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, if you could help, I'm reading Enjoy Life Forever. I'm yeah. finding it very interesting. Um, I've been at it for quite some time. I was given a copy by somebody beside one of the carts. I was given a second-hand copy. Okay. There's a couple of things I'm curious about, but would you? I think it would be best to look at just one single topic rather than jump all over the shop. Do you think yeah, that's best? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever I can help with. Um, well, one of the things I'm puzzled about would be lesson 44, do all celebrations please God. Yeah, OK, yeah. Um, I was quite surprised when I spoke to the Jehovah's Witnesses at the Carts. They do celebrate wedding anniversaries. Yes. Yes. And I went on JW.org uh, 100 years after the um, first Watchtower in 1979, there was a 100th anniversary issue of the Watchtower, so, uh, you know, celebrating another anniversary. Yes. But you don't celebrate birthdays. I mean, it seems, yeah. a, bit, yeah. it seems a bit inconsistent to celebrate yearly anniversaries, such as wedding anniversaries or the 100th ish, the 100 year issue of the Watchtower in 1979, but you don't celebrate birthdays, especially when the Bible has absolutely nothing to say on birthdays at all. I have a couple of things to say on, on birthdays, but I can see why it, it sounds a little contradictory. Um, I understand that. I think when you look at, at birthdays, um, if we just take one birthday, for instance, that's the birthday of Jesus Christ, we don't actually know when that was. So I know the world celebrates it um, on the 25th of December. I'm, I'm not here to defend the, the December the 25th. I'm oh, sorry, no, no, I refuse I'm, to I'm do that. An example of, no, I'm just giving an example of a birthday. So what I'm saying no, is... I, I, I don't celebrate December the 25th, so I don't right, wish to okay. discuss it because it's not something that I do. It's like me saying, I insist that you defend the Quran that Muhammad is a prophet of God. Now, if you if you say to me, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, I'm not a Muslim, I don't read the Quran, it would be kind of insulting for me to insist, you must defend Muhammad, you must defend the Quran, because I tell yeah. you to. Because yeah. you, you've told me plain, you're not a Muslim. I don't yeah. celebrate, I don't have kids, so I don't celebrate December the 25th. Jesus was, was, um, was um, born um, when the animals were out in the fields. Not yeah. in the winter time when the animals would have been taken indoors because of the coldness on the um, mountains of Israel or Palestine or whatever word you want to use to refer to the nation. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not here to defend that. Um, I don't see in the Bible a command. If this was so important, surely in the epistles we would find repeated over and over again, do not celebrate your birthday it is a sin we don't find any command in any of the epistles of paul or james or or peter or john none of these epistles tell us um that we shouldn't keep birthdays so i just don't think it's important to god okay um no i understand why why you, you, you're saying that i think if it was something that they'd want us to celebrate it, it would be clearly there um, there's only one sort of main command isn't there and that's that's to commemorate Jesus' death. Um, well, and the only, the only time when when birthdays are mentioned, they're in a very negative sense. And, and from, from records that have shown, none of the disciples, none of the apostles celebrated their birthdays. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is no record in the Bible of Jesus or the apostles ever brushing their teeth or clipping their toenails or fingernails. That's true. That's true. So therefore, we could reason from that it is a sin to brush your teeth and it is a sin to clip your toenails. You should let your nails grow. I think there was one person in the Guinness Book of Records who did that. They let their nails grow to an incredible length and they curled around and they were an incredible length after 70 or 80 years or so without being clipped. Um, dogs are mentioned 40 times in the Bible, every time in a negative light. Never in the Bible are dogs mentioned in a positive light. So would, could we reason from this that uh, Christians should not keep dogs or even have pets? No. I, love, I love parrots. I, I wish I had enough money to have a, a parrot. I love parrots. 
grew up with an African grey. Where in the Bible do people keep parrots or birds as pets? So therefore, yeah, you, you, can, you, you, you can prove anything from the Bible. What you need is clear didactic passages. Didactics would be teaching. You can't go to a history book and reason something from a, a history book. You can't base a teaching on a historical account. It, it, it's shaky. You need clear didactic teachings. You need someone in an epistle to say, you know, this is the epistle of Paul to the Philippians or Ephesians. Thou must not keep a birthday. It is a sin. Oh, then it's absolutely clear. Um, we are told by Paul that we should not uh, get uptight about celebrations and birthday and feast days. You know, we're free to welcome. We're free to keep whichever day we want. Paul did say that, didn't didn't he? So, so um, when it, when it comes to birthdays, um, as I said, you have you have two examples in the Bible that are, are in a negative sense, but also give me one. Have, give give me know, one, and let's look at one in 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 depth. Sorry, I, 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 you, you cut off a little bit. Yeah, there. let's look at one. Don't say there's two. Let's look at one, and let's look at it in depth. I'm going to load. Um, yeah. Let me just finish what I was going to say, because um, you have, well, I'll come back to it in a minute, the, t the two celebrations that were mentioned were in a negative sense, but also but birthday celebrations have pagan roots. Well, so, so too do wedding, wedding rings, which Jehovah's Witnesses wear. Wedding flowers were used, as was the wedding veil, to ward off evil spirits. So should we not have wedding rings? Should we not have wedding veils or wedding flowers? Wedding veils have gone out of fashion. Lipstick was used by ancient prostitutes as a, to signify that they do a certain type of sexual activity using the mouth. So they painted the mouth because that's what they would use for their sexual services. Does that mean that no women today, no Jehovah's Witness women, should use lipstick? Because that's the ancient meaning of, of that. Words, words change over time. If I said, uh, if I said I'm going to be made the captain of a ship, right? Yeah. In the 18th century, that would be a small wooden sailing ship. If I said I'm going to be made the captain of a ship in the 19th century, the later, the late 19th century, that would almost certainly be an iron ship, uh, run powered by coal. Uh, with a, a, a steam steam turbine. In the 20th century, there would have been diesel, steel ships made of diesel, well, in the late 20th century, made of steel. And some ships have nuclear power. Certain American aircraft carriers are, have not, they're not powered by diesel, they're powered by nuclear power. So if I say I'm going to be the captain of the ship, you have to look at the context, because the context can be very, very difficult. Very, very different. If I said I'm, uh, not that I want to do this, but I said, if I said I'm going to shoot somebody, right, uh, a uh. thousand BC, that would be with a bow and arrow. Uh. After Agincourt, crossbows came into fashion because they were more powerful than bows and arrows. So in a military battle, if I'm going to shoot someone in a military battle, 15th century would be with a crossbow. 18th century would be a, with a musket. 20th century would be with a gun or a machine gun, and if I said I'm going to shoot somebody now, there's very little um, actual battles where two armies line up like they used to. If I said I'm going to shoot someone now, it could be with a missile, with a drone or with a missile, and even a laser, because the American warships now have lasers on them. They're not very effective because they're not powerful enough. The next generation will be more powerful. You can shoot a missile down eventually with a laser. Yeah. So if I said I'm going to shoot you, it would be the bow and arrow 3,000 years ago. Now it could be with a laser. The, the, the words change change according to the context, you see. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, what, what about the wedding ring? I mean, the wedding ring has pagan roots. 
it's a, it's a circular band, so it fits on your finger. But it, it, the reason why it's circular is it, it means an eternal link to, to a pagan god. Now, that was the meaning three, 4,000 years ago in a pagan culture. It doesn't mean that today, surely. It, no, it doesn't. But certainly not, most people wouldn't view it as that. Right, so... Right, so if a kid has a birthday party and wears a silly hat and blows out candles, it has nothing whatsoever to do with paganism. That little kid is not worshipping the devil. Yeah. Surely you can see this is going to be the next thing that Jehovah's Witness abandon. And I think they'll abandon this book, Enjoy Life Forever, and re reprint it without the chapter on blood and without the chapter on um, birthday celebrations. Because I think those two things are going to go. Otherwise around the world, they're going to lose their charity status. Um, well, I, I, don't, I can answer about the, the charity status. I don't know whether that will, will be affected. Um, but uh, as for changing uh, viewpoints, um, yeah, sometimes uh, things come to light and, and certain views change. Um, whether that will happen with birthdays, I doubt it. Whether it will happen with blood, I very much doubt it. Um, because both of those are are mentioned in the Bible, um, and with with Bible references, um, so I, I doubt they'll change. Um, it's April two thousand and twenty four now. I bet you by the end of the year they've changed both of those beliefs. Well, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, I doubt it very very much. Um, I think I think with blood I, I, again we, we're diversing here. Um, with blood, it's it's very clear what the what the Bible says, how sacred it is, and what 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 God first stipulated about it. So I think that's very clear. I can't see that changing at all. The benefits of non-blood use uh, are huge. Yeah, I'm happy to talk another time about Lesson Thirty Nine, blood. With regard to birthdays, there isn't any Bible verse that forbids a Christian to keep a birthday. Surely, no, there isn't. Um, it's the principles that are, that are within those verses. Uh, what verses? Uh, what, you know, give so me, there's only two, give me two, one. Two. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Give me one. Give me, give me one verse that commands me not to keep a birthday. No, I, I said it doesn't. It doesn't command you not to. But what? But the connotation of those verses are in a very negative sense, and both both resulted in the death one of John the Baptist. Um, because so so when you're looking at and there's nothing positive about birthdays in the Bible and if if it was what, the, the most important date surely would have been Jesus' birthday and it's not mentioned they didn't celebrate birthdays back then so that's it, it that's is it, it is the birth of Jesus is celebrated in Luke chapter one the angels sang and praised God on Jesus' birthday when he was born Luke yeah. Luke one. I, I've I've lost my main Bible. Um, I'm totally that, lost. That, that is a, I've got did, a, they, did they then celebrate his birth each year afterwards? Well, the Bible doesn't say. We just don't know. But they celebrated his birth, right? The the angels celebrated the birth of Christ. And it's a happy occasion, isn't it? When when a newborn comes into the world, it's a very happy occasion, and people come around, and they they might even bring gifts, they might even want to see the baby, and so on. And that's a, it's a happy occasion. But um, the, you know, the Bible talks about birthdays in a negative sense. And if if Jesus' birthday was to be celebrated, surely that would have been contained in the Bible for us to, it, to follow it. It is. Just as his death is. It is Luke chapter two verse. Um, 12 and 12 to 14 and this will be the sign to you you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill towards men so there's a celebration for yeah. the future birth of Christ celebration i'm not i'm not denying that that was a celebration what i'm saying is from then on if it was to be celebrated yearly it would be contained in the scriptures it's it's, it's, so. it's just the bible's silent upon it. it can do what you want it's not something that's that's an issue 
Um, okay. If you wish to, do it. If you don't, don't. Oh. But um, where does the Bible say, you see, I have to try and base my faith upon the Bible. Where does the Bible say that I shouldn't keep a birthday? If you're going to, you know, is, is there a, which verse could you point me to? No, no there isn't one. Right, then I'm, then surely it's because it's not an issue to God. The keeping of a birthday is not an issue to God, surely. But not, not everything we do and don't do should have a, a law. There are Bible principles that we follow. Right, right, but, but all the cults have Bible principles. The Mormons, the Christadelphians, the Iglesia Ni Christu. I used to be a oneness Pentecostal. They can all talk about principles, and that means basically following the guy at the top, usually a man, sometimes at the top, Seventh-day Adventism. It was a woman who started Seventh-day Adventism, Ellen G. White. But it's usually a man, and principles are saying basically the leader that you're following trumps the Bible. You've ever played trumps? You, yes, yeah, I have, yeah. You can, you, you know, I had an ace in my hand. I was about to put an ace down and win that hand. But my ace ace of hearts it was not it was not trumps so when someone has the card that is trump say diamonds they put any card down they win the hand mm. and that's what a bible principle is if the bible says something you can totally ignore it because the leader of your group says something different mm. yeah i don't agree with that but um i know what you're saying i just don't agree with that because i think i think the bible is very clear. So, so think of a principle: um, the, the fruit is it the fruit of the spirit um, or the the works of the flesh? And at the end of the verse, it says, "And things like these." So, you don't need to have every single work of the flesh to be to be mentioned to know what it would be a work of the flesh. So, you, and that's a principle. Um, otherwise, you could say, "Well, it's not actually named there." Therefore, it's okay, it's up to you. Well, well, we know it's not. That would be a Bible principle. Sorry, just go through that again. Sorry, I do beg your pardon, sir. That's okay. Um, so in the in, uh, book of Galatians, we, there's a, I think it's chapter 5, it talks about the works, or, or the fruits of the yes. Spirit, and yes. the works of the flesh. Yes. And at the end of the works of the flesh, it says, and things like these. And what I'm saying is you don't need to have every single work of the flesh mentioned because when it says things like these, we have to use our, our uh, reasoning ability to know what would be displeasing to God. Yes, but people, but people don't. People don't use their reasoning ability. They follow their leaders. It, it was seen so clearly in the Middle Ages. You followed the Pope. If the Pope said something, he is the vicar of Christ on earth, according to the Pope. He's the successor of St. Peter. You follow him. Yeah. And if you disagree yeah. with him, you could end up being burnt at the stake or skinned alive in some dungeon. Yeah. Yeah? So yeah. it's very clear. The same thing is true today. There are lots of different groups. Mormons, Iglesia Ni Christu. Um, I've had quite a lot of dealings with RCCG and Winner's Chapel from Nigeria on tithing. Right. All of these groups are all the same. The oneness that I used to be connected to, Christadelphians, they're all, the Seventh-day Adventism, it's all the same. To varying degrees, these are people who don't think for themselves. They follow the leader, and the leader does the thinking for them. So all you need to do is to obey the leader. And the leader will have all these principles that you have to follow. They have oh, principles yeah, oh, because they yeah, can't they, they can't prove them. anything clearly from the Bible, so they've got principles. And I found the verse in Colossians, Colossians two sixteen. Paul says, "So let no one judge you in food or drink, or regarding a festival, or a new moon, or Sabbath." So we're not to be judged on birthdays, because Paul says. We're not to be judged in food, drink, or regarding a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. There's, there's nothing wrong with giving your mother a Mother's Day card. There's nothing wrong with celebrating a birthday. Now, I, the, 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 I mean, dogs are mentioned 40 times in the Bible, always negatively. Why did Jehovah's Witnesses keep dogs? Why do you have pets? 
I, I, I don't see Jesus. Do you see Jesus having, uh, do you see um, the story of Jesus when he was young, having, having pets and playing with pet dogs and cats and parrots? No. There's no reference to, as far as I know, Jesus having pets. Um, so therefore, should we say that it's, it's a sin to have a pet? But was it, was it, is it, has it got pagan roots? Has it, is, is it mentioned at all in the Bible? I mean, you say, like earlier, you said about dogs, all in a negative sense in the Bible. So, yeah, that's, so, that's fine. Hold on, what do you mean by pagan roots? You mean things like the wedding ring and flowers at weddings. Wedding rings were circular bands. When you married, when two people married, they both wore a wedding ring to show that they're linked eternally to their pagan god. Mm. Wedding veils and wedding flowers were used to ward off evil spirits. Does that mean we shouldn't have wedding... No, we don't have wedding... Well, actually, yes, we do have wedding veils and wedding flowers today, don't we? The bride usually has a veil over her face. That's a tradition used to ward off evil spirits. It's a pagan thing. And lipstick was used by ancient prostitutes to signify they would do a sexual service using their mouth. So they painted their mouth bright red to signify this service, whether they were male or female prostitutes. So that means that they all have pagan roots. Does that mean that we shouldn't, um, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses shouldn't have wedding rings? have wedding veils and wedding flowers and no no woman would ever use lipstick C- can't, can't you see the meaning has totally changed over time it's irrelevant yeah yeah i can i can, I can see when you when you're talking about wedding rings things like that that's that's it and i, and I vaguely remember reading an article on that and it's 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 slipped my mind i, don't, I can't yes, recall yes. Exactly, exactly what it said but um all I can say is, with regard to birthdays, it, they are mentioned in the Bible, and that, that's what, one of the reasons why Jehovah's Witnesses refrain from um, but, celebrating birthdays. But you keep avoiding these verses. You're not showing me these these verses. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> have, you, have you ever have you heard have a, uh, heard? And I can't pronounce the word. It's a Mexican tradition that comes originally from Asia. The, the Spanish took it to Mexico, but it comes from Asia. Um, it's where you have a straw donkey and you tie it to a tree you fill it with sweets and little kids have to be blindfolded you give them a stick and you say left a bit right a bit forward a bit and they're to hit the donkey with the stick until the sweets come out I forget the name of the um, Mm, I've never heard of that um, because the Jehovah's Witnesses have written about this they admit in their article that it is a pagan practice. But then they they say, although it's a pagan practice, it's totally lost its pagan meaning. Yeah. Uh, pin, piñatas. Piñatas. Okay. It's very popular in Mexico. And, yeah, because there are so many, and because there are so many Mexican Jehovah's Witnesses, and, you know, many Mexicans are ne- who are Jehovah's Witnesses now live in America... Um, they've said, yeah, even though this is a pagan, has pagan roots, like, like um, the wedding ring and the wedding veil and lipstick, it's totally lost its meaning today. So Jehovah's Witness children can hit the piñata, which is a straw or a cloth donkey filled with sweets. You hang it from a tree, but from a piece of string, and you hit it with a stick until it breaks open, and the kids get the sweets. Even though this has this is a, a pagan tradition from Central Asia, Jehovah's Witnesses children are allowed to do this because it's totally, completely lost its meaning today. Mm. Okay, yeah, that, that's probably, I think that's similar to the wedding ring um, reasoning. I think I, I, again, I need to do some yeah. research on that. I'm sure I've read an article on it. Um, so I think that, that but uh, you, you say you've read an article you say you've read an article on it why don't you go to the Bible and find things out for yourself rather than have somebody tell you what to believe um, because when you think uh, in the first century there was a there was a governing body that that uh, gave the the, um, the congregation at the time the the new form congregations uh, direction uh, and that's similar today that's there was no governing it. body in the first century. You will not find that found anywhere in Scripture. 
Acts chapter 15, they had apostles and elders. We do not have apostles today. These are people who witnessed the resurrected Christ, Acts 1, 21 to 23. They accompanied Christ for three years. They witnessed his resurrection. We don't have apostles today. We do have elders today. But in Christianity, it's best to make up your own mind for yourself because there's so much craziness in all religions. There are so many crazy people. Uh, yeah. Absolutely insane people. I'm learning about Islam at the moment. And I've been right. listening to people on YouTube trying to learn about Islam. Okay. And um, I went into someone's room and I noticed they made a mistake. They claim to be Trinitarian, but they made a rather bad mistake about the Trinity. Um. I politely tried to help and correct. And I was told that I was of the devil. I was Satan. Um, uh, a demon and then I found out yesterday um, that um, somebody else who was a new convert to Christ went into a similar room where the same person was a famous evangelist to, to Muslims and he had tried to ask a question and he was called a child of the devil and a whore child of a whore his mother was a whore and this wow. is from a so-called Christian evangelist. I mean, there's so many crazy people out there. Yeah. And yeah. you look at the religious people where I live, it's quite obvious when I meet most religious people, they honestly don't give a rat's hoot. They don't care about God. They don't care about me. They don't care about the Bible. They just want a nice, comfortable life that suits them. And that's yeah. most religious people. Most religious people have no passion for their faith at all. No. Um, why should I want to be con committed to that? No one's going to listen to me. I, 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 I was baptised in the Assemblies of God Church uh, almost 40 years ago. I was baptised 1985, so I would have made a profession of faith probably 1984. That's yeah. probably when I cried out and unasked um, Jesus to save me. That's 40 years. Wow. And the older I get, the more convinced I am that most of it's complete nonsense. Now, I'm not denying the Bible. I believe that Christ is fully God and fully man. I believe the Bible is the word of God. I believe in Christ's literal um, virgin birth. I believe it is sinless life. I believe in Christ's literal physical bodily resurrection from the dead. I believe in Christ's second coming. I believe in um, um, the Bible is the word of God. And all of that means nothing to most people. It's a case of, no, with no, most no. religion, you're just joining a social club. They couldn't give yeah. a hoot what the Bible says. And I'm speaking to Muslims at the moment. And I find it's exactly the same in Islam. Most Muslims do not know anything at all about the Quran or Islam. You no. ask them a question about the Quran, they get very angry very quickly because they don't know. And all they yeah. do is that they say the same thing. You must speak to my Imam. You must speak to my Imam. And when I speak to the Imams, they get angry very, very quickly because they get money for their religious duties, some of them. Yeah. Uh, I know the Shia get extremely large amounts of money. That's why they'll never give it up because they live like kings, some of the Shia clerics. Um, and they're as, dumb as a, there's a, they're as dumb as a barn door because you ask them questions about the Quran and they don't know. But they've got to defend it because it's their money, it's their business. Now, I'm not saying all Islamic scholars are dumb and stupid and, OK, I'm sure there are some who are smart. And I've met one or... I, I haven't met, but I've spoken to one or two on the telephone who are certainly intelligent. But I've met so many and I'm shocked because they clearly don't know what they're talking about. Re religion is a business. I'm sorry, but for most people, religion is a business, and you're, you're better off thinking for yourself and, and working it out for yourself, honestly. And if you do that, you become passionate, because no one's given you your religious beliefs. You've thought it through for yourself, and it's so much more fun. It's so much more interesting. That, that's, that's, that's what I've done in my life. And from talking to you, you're, you're, you're very educated. You know your scriptures, and, and I can tell how passionate you are, and that's, that's like, for me, that's lovely to hear. Um, we may disagree on a, on a few yes. things, 
Um, but it, but your but your love for the Bible is it shines through, and I'm I'm delighted to to know that. I love I love the Bible. I love my worship, and I love everything about it. And you know, if, if things if things do change in in the, in the future, then, then so be it. I just want to maybe I can yeah. say about um, you know following men. We, we're not following men. However, we do have what we believe is a a governing body, a, um, a someone to to give us the the food at the right times, help us to understand the scriptures. Most of it you can understand yourself, but there are there are areas where we need that, and, and that's a scriptural thing. Like you said, the apostles and elders that they they wrote letters to clarify matters in the first century, and that's that's happening today. Uh, that, that's what we believe. So um, you know, but you're right. For the most part, we have to make our own decisions on things, um, which which we do. We we follow Bible principles, um, but we're also directed by um, we think a spirit directed organisation that, that's directed by Jesus Christ as a head. How can the organisation be a spirit directed organisation when in a watchtower? And I think it's February two thousand and seventeen. I can't remember the exact reference. It states that the governing body is neither inspired. Let me let me try and find it. There is an actual watchtower where they state that the governing body are not in, not inspired and not anointed. Uh, they are anointed. Um, it may be that they're. Oh, they are anointed. Okay. Yeah, I think you're actually right there. I'm. Yeah. I think they state that they are anointed, but they're not inspired. Let me just find yeah, it. I know it's I 2017. Because right, um, the scriptures are inspired. Uh, the Bible is inspired of God, so um, Second Timothy, isn't it? Um, and but but the governing body are they rely on God's Spirit to direct them. So not inspired, but yes, we like we can ask for Jehovah's Spirit, can't we, or God's Spirit? Yes, you know, yes. to help us, and, and that's in a similar way. Right, you are right. They do claim. This is the Watchtower, February 2017, page 26. Okay. Uh, the governing body henceforth included anointed brothers who were not society directors. Yeah. And it says that they were distinguished in 1971 from the Watchtower Society as a legal instrument rather than a scriptural entity. Yeah, it, it became quite legal, a legal thing. I can't find... Uh, here we are. I found it. It's the same Watchtower. It's um, February 2017 Watchtower, page 24, paragraph 12. It says, the, what, the, the governing body is neither inspired nor perfect. It can make mistakes when explaining the Bible or directing the organisation. So it's so it says the governing body is not inspired. Yeah. But you are right. They do claim that they are anointed. Yes. And they also claim on the next page that angels help the governing body. Yeah. That's 2017 Watchtower, February, page 25, paragraph 14. Angels help the governing body. The governing body has the huge responsibility of directing over 8 million publishers and the worldwide preaching work. Uh, going on later, in many cases, angels have directed publishers to a person who had just prayed to God for help. But it says angels help the governing body. So the governing body claimed that they're not inspired but they are directed yeah. by angels and they are anointed. How can someone be anointed, directed by angels, and yet they're not inspired? Uh, maybe that's in the wording. Um, I like, like, as I said, the Bible is inspired of God. It's, it's absolutely perfect. Um, whereas you can be directed by spirit, you can be directed by angels, but it's not necessarily inspired. So, um, mm. you know, we, we see that all the time um, when we go about our ministry. There's, there is multitude there's so many that it's not a coincidence where you know someone calls on someone who's been praying and they they were literally asking for that time or, or other occasions when certain ones 
felt that they should go somewhere and, and, and speak to somebody and they don't know why and it turns out that, you know, we, we, we feel that that's been directed. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the scripture in Revelation said that there's the angel in mid-heaven, you know, who's de- got good news to declare. Well, they don't declare the good news per se, do they? Themselves, but they, they have got people on earth that, that they're directing. Oh. I, I uh, see. Well, there are every other religious group makes almost identical claims that yeah, they're also okay. directed by angels yeah. and that um, people are praying and then members of their group, whether it's the Mormons, yeah. the Glazian, yeah. Christu, Christadelphians, they just happen to turn up. Look, I'm, thank you very much. I'm happy to speak again, okay. uh, maybe some other time, but I would suggest yeah. we agree one single topic, partly my fault, I must admit, Let's agree one single topic and then stick to that. Should that be 1919, the date yeah. 1919, or um, did Christ rise from the dead as a spirit? I believe he rose from the dead in the same body he died in. Mm. Or would you <laughs> wish to discuss Trinity? Because I would be a Trinitarian. Of those three, or is the Holy Spirit an impersonal it or is the holy spirit a he which of those things do you think would appeal most perhaps if we agree to just stick to one i can do some research i'm I'm happy to stick to to do whatever you would like Um, well there's no point in talking to you if you haven't done if you don't know anything at all about the topic that you've agreed to discuss so i would rather you choose a topic where you know you've done the work you've done the research of those topics I've mentioned, would there be any topic that you think I have done the work on this? I've done the research on this. I'm happy to talk about the Trinity. Okay. I'm All right. Yeah. Okay. Trinity, or, or if you want to be specific on the Holy Spirit, um, or yeah. Well, that's a different there. topic. Just choose one topic. Okay. Let's go. Let's go through the Trinity. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to do that. My, my name is Robert. Uh, I can speak any day except for Monday. All I ask is give me a day's notice as to when you want to speak. I don't care when. Okay. I can speak yeah, whenever. Sure. But just give me a day's notice via text. You're going to phone me at such and such a time. If it's inconvenient, okay. I will phone you back. But nine times out of ten, if you give me a day's notice, I can rearrange my schedule around when you want to speak. Never, ever on a Monday at any time. That's okay. Um, is it during the day? Uh, I've just told you, I don't care. Okay. It can, it can yep. be to suit you. Um, let's say between 10 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock at night. Right. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. That's Wokingham Congregation.